afternoon. Afternoon. If, uh, if that's when this out. podcast come, goes up, I don't know. The sun's out. The sun's it never is. Out. The sun's never out when we record. It's always dark. I know. It's getting to like your heart. Out. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. I'm Dan Cyan. And I'm Jake Flello. Podcast. Jake, also known as Jake Dark Heart Flello. That's my emo <laughs> name. That's your emo name. Got the fringe for it. Need to turn the sound off. On turn the sound off. That was slightly unprofessional. It was a little bit. Was I also haven't changed the settings. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, uh, blah blah. What do we start with? Oh, That's, what have we been playing? Yes, I have been playing Titanfall, and I think so have you. I have been playing Titanfall. We have some things to say. But I've also been playing the Binding of Isaac. Good game. I've only just started playing the DLC, Wrath of the Lamb, which is also a good DLC. So, what is the Binding of Isaac? It's a I don't know, I can never pronounce it right. Procedurally generated game. Oh. So it has a set of items that could spawn. It has a set of enemies that could spawn. Room la- A set of room layouts and a set of where the enemies could be within that room. And there are different floors and different floors have different percentages of chances of different enemies in different room types. And then on each floor is an item room, um, a shop or arcade, um, loads of rooms with enemies and monies and keys and stuff in it that might have chests etc for items or more monies and hearts and coins and then there's a boss room and then you do the boss room and go down to the next level i think you're making this sound more intricate than it is yes definitely (laughs) there's some rooms with stuff in and you do some stuff yeah and the story is your mum locked you in the basement and you're trying to get up through the basement fighting all these things and do you know what you shoot your tears. Well, you fire your tears. Yes, that you shoot your tears. Okay. And um, the last boss is your mum. Then the level after you defeat the main boss, because there's a bit after that as well, is um, called Utero. Mm. And the boss inside Utero is Mum's Heart. Okay. And it's also a floor called Mum's Womb. It's a very weird game. It is. That sounds very weird. But it's really fun as well. It's addictive because I'm trying to like unlock all of the items, and you want to keep playing it to unlock okay. it. It's really good. So Titanfall. That's also really good. It is. It's a really good game. But, uh, the story's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I certainly like the way that like it makes you go through the IMC campaign first, doesn't it? Um, I think so. Yes. And like. Oh going... no! It might be random then because I think I went through militia first. Did you? I think I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I went through Militia first. With, then IMC. I think the best way around must be is IMC. No, I liked it the other way around. Because yeah. like, when you go through the IMC, you're sort of like... Spoilers. Just um, Yeah, more than this, you know. people know if they watch this, is this isn't spoiler free. No, this is far from spoiler free. This is spoiler territory here. This is like a mind. We should call it the spoiler cast. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's already a thing. And this isn't what that is. Like, We're like a teenager's car. Loads of spoilers. Oh, I get that. But yeah. they normally mm. only have one, and it's normally a big one. But, but it's just, So yeah, it's a really good campaign. I'm glad, I'm like the way they did it. I wasn't sure of how it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be sort of a multiplayer game, and they slapped a bit of story on. But it's really embedded in what you're doing. Yeah. And why you're doing it, and throughout you playing that one match. I kind of like, well, I was going to say something about the IMC going first, but when you go through the as the IMC, you feel like the sort of character in other sort of shooter games like you know what? where you get like where who? you do what you're told like you go here and shoot the people and then oh yes as the militia the you militia. sort of, the militia yeah i keep I keep saying it like that you sort of feel like these i was a prick when i was imc yeah they they definitely show you both sides yeah they they really have done what brink were trying to i feel with the smooth movement so the free running etc the, there's no bad guys, it's just different sides of the same story. Yeah. I think... The IMC are kind of bad guys, though, really. I wouldn't know. I, wouldn't I mean, the mil- no. militia really do commit a few war crimes here and there, just a few. But I'd, I would say that the IMC are definitely the bad guys. No. Um, I'd definitely say the dude that leads the I- IMC is a dick. Yeah. He's a big dick. General- South African dick. General South African. <laughs> I don't know his racist. name, that's what I call him. No, um, really good the way they show you both sides of the story. I liked it. Moving on to the negative. Yep, mm, can I say my negatives first? Go for your negatives. Goddamn fucking Call of Duty players. I like them. Do you? Yep. 
when it was the beer, I felt like, you know, everyone was having fun and it was just like, you know, you play this game and it felt like it's fun and even if you didn't do too well, you felt like you were useful to your team in some aspect. Oh, maybe. yeah, no, I, I totally agree that that's gone. That is gone now. That's long gone. That's gone now because so many people are taking it so goddamn fucking seriously and I'm having less fun. Yep, yep, like you. No, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I'm like that, but yeah, I like it because as much as they are like that, they're very closed mind. They're the people that will go into a building, go up the stairs, look around, you can out tell the window. When they're and you then there's now. me, like, Wee! Look at me at the walls! Look at me at the walls! <laughs> like, I spent an entire match not touching the floor. I used zip lines and walls, and that's all I did the whole match. Wow. Didn't kill anyone, but <laughs> I had loads of fun. It certainly is set up so you can have loads of fun. Oh, but definitely. then those other people just get along, and they're like, oh, I'll shoot you. Every fucking ten seconds, you get shot. There's lots of small, like, not even tips but like things that you don't notice that if you do helps like i told you earlier that if you're on a zip line and you jump off or you've been wall running and you jump off once you've got that momentum if you jump off and just carry on running you lose the momentum instantly whereas if you as you hit the ground you jump the momentum continues it doesn't build but continues uh, i do feel kind of like uh i'm glad i played the beta otherwise the sort of barrier of entry of these yeah, this bags. this would have put me off instantly. Yeah, like, I'm I'm a little bit put off already, but it, I would have got it and be like, no, I'm, pff, no, mm -mm. not dealing not, with not, these people. No. Yeah, I'll go back to Call of Duty. Hopefully, they're fucked off from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a good game. Other than that, um, but also I find playing the online on my own boring, and I can't put my finger on why. I can only play like one or two matches, and I enjoy those matches. Yeah, but after that, I have to stop. Yeah, it's better to play it with friends and like you're like, I'm going to be, I'll, I'll go to be with you, we can capture it faster, yeah. Well, like, this morning, your girlfriend was online, I was like, oh, Sammy, drum a pie! Oh, oh, okay, don't drum a pie. Drum a pie, please. Please, I want to play Titanfall. <laughs> please drum a pie. Like, and she never did. I think last night, I played um, a match of Heartpoint and Domination, I was the best on the team, and I was like, yeah, that was really fun, I'm going to stop playing now. I played uh, Trishan this morning, didn't die once. Got a score of 120 or 140, one of them two. Didn't die a single time. So I didn't do amazingly well, but I done really well. That's not amazingly well. I've never done that well. Because you're not as good as me, can you not? Well, you know that you do better at other games, like Fez and Portal and stuff, and I'm like, yay, Twitch shooters, my thing. Yeah, I do like puzzles and stuff. I like puzzles, I just get frustrated and give up on them very quickly. <laughs> But yeah, it's a good game, but it does have its drawbacks. There's yeah. no doubt in that. Not that, you know, Respawn had any control over the people that could play it. No, it's not it's... like they could say, your gamer score is this much on Call of Duty games, you can't play Titanfall. No, but I do definitely put it down to the people that are playing it. Like, my boredom, I don't know what it is. I think it might be the lack of the... It feels like everyone's doing their own thing. There isn't a team... Like, on Call of Duty, yeah. where everyone's the same, like, there's no going up on top of buildings, etc. It's just upstairs or downstairs. Um, you can see where your team are, so you can see where you're pushing the other the rest of the team. Like the opponent team, if you're doing team of deathmatch, you can see where your team are, so you know that the people aren't there. They're in the gap where your people aren't. Yes. You're sort of pushing the team. You can see where the spawns are moving, etc. Yeah. Um, whereas on this, it's like there's, it's every man with himself. It feels like. Yeah. So it's how but the, the game thing is, is played. You, you do better when you're working as a team. Yeah, like you when communicate. We, when we were playing Hardpoint Domination. I don't uh, think when we play together, we've never lost a game of Hardpoint Domination. No, because we communicate and yeah. work as a team. And if two of us go to one Hardpoint, you do capture it very really quick. Fast. Yeah, and when there's like four of you, it's like done. Oh, Just okay. like walk into the room, to gun. Oh, look, contested. Die. <laughs> no, it's a really good fun, but it's the downfall is the people that are playing it. Yeah, which is pretty ironic. A great game that's made crap by people playing it. Yeah, it happens all the time. Call of Duty would be good if it didn't have all Call of Duty players on it. I think Call of Duty fits what the people it's got on it there. Yeah, uh, they built it around that though. Yeah, so they've um, announced that they are going to be working on a Titanfall 2 of some description. Yeah. And EA have the publishing rights to that. And they've done alright this time. EA have, haven't messed this up yet. Speaking of sequels. Speaking of sequels. Incredibles 2. Has that actually been announced? Yes. No way! I, I saw that and was like, there is no way that's real. Apparently it was um, some CEO at Pixar said, yep, we're working on it. Working on it? How long have you had? It should be done! 
I want it. They set up for a sequel so badly. Kind of, but I think... Didn't the game have the Underminer in it? Yeah, the game was like the sequel of the film, because there wasn't a sequel of the film. Yeah. And but could, does that mean that... And you could play as Frozone. Could you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I, I remember going to my mate's house, and I was like, you want to be Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible's the best. You want to be Mr. Incredible. He's the best character there. He's like, super strong, and super strong, convincingly he wanted to be uh, Mr. Incredible, so I could be Frozone. Uh, I saw something quite interesting the, on Tumblr the other day, and it wasn't kind of like, you know, look at this hat this person's wearing. This obviously means this entire essay on this. It's sort of like, oh, you're not referencing anything in particular there, but <laughs> carry on. <laughs> I thought that was a really nice, don't worry, it's all fan, not fiction, but like fans reading too much into it. Yeah, I think it was it's nice. It was one of the creators of Incredible who said it, so, you know, this is something that we're actually going for. Yeah. Like, each of the characters' powers in the Incredibles family have, like, it represents their role in the family. Right. Like, the teenage girl is shy, so she can turn invisible and create shields and stuff like that. And teenage, the young boys are always hyperactive, so they run around fast. The man is, like, they're always supposed to be strong for the family and all that. And the mother is, like, being stretched every which way because they have so many jobs to do. Well, are froze on. He's black, so he's got to be cool. Yep. That's his power. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Misfits was much like that at the beginning. I don't know whether you watched the TV, UK ter- TV series Misfits. Nope. They got struck by lightning and all got superpowers while they were on community service. Brilliant, because it's like real life. If, what happened if you got superpowers? But everyone got a power, like the thing they wanted most. Like one guy just wanted to vanish. He didn't want to be here anymore. He got invisibility. One girl wanted to be completely irresistible. So every time people touched her, as long as they had contact with her, they got so horny they couldn't control it. That's an amazing power. It's not. It's and I explore that as the series goes on, but like they all got what they really wanted. Like one guy regretted a decision he made. He got the ability to travel back in time. Okay. To write his mistake, etc. Um. But it was all done very subtly. But when you looked at it, it was very well done. But yeah, I like things like that. Not Easter eggs, but backstory, like the influences, the meaning. Yeah. So like the thought behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, kind of, maybe, something. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Next thing. Shall we get on to news? Yeah. News, news, news. I got new shoes the other day. Interesting. We've already got to like twelve minutes. Oh, this is. Okay. <laughs> we have a lot to get through. Oh, we didn't ne- last week. We didn't um, do a recording because I forgot. Don't why. look at me. It wasn't me. No, it was me. Oh. But I forgot why. I had something that I had to do. Okay, so news from South by Southwest. Yes. Something I'm very excited about. Costume Twist, uh, Costume Quest 2 coming this Halloween. Costume Quest. Which one was that? Was that the one where you were like those Russian dolls that could jump inside each other? No, that's uh, stacking. Oh. Costume that's, Quest that's is like the... It's like a Halloween one. Where they're like dressed up as Halloween on Halloween and they have like... They battle and they turn into what their costume is. Like a giant robot. Huh, new to me. Oh dear, sounds cool. Apparently there's a sequel, Tim Schafer said. Awesome. Gone Home is coming to consoles. Is it? Yeah, so I'm interested in that. I'm going to get Yeah, that. loads of people have said good things about it, so it'll be interesting to see what that's like. Games of Gold is getting a revamp, apparently. Revamp? In what sense? Uh, they... We're going to get uh, good games? I can't remember who it was, but he said something like, oh, we want it to be what people expected when we announced this. So the Assassin's Creed they promised and Halo they promised. Well, they gave out Halo 3, and they didn't have promised Assassin's Creed. It was they Fable did. 3 and they Halo promi- 3. They promised Assassin's Creed, and we got and Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed 2. Yeah, and we got Assassin's Creed 2. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they didn't give that, but then after those after those big ones, all we've had is like, oh, let down Shitty Liberty Cities. Games. Yeah. I mean, I've tried a few of them, and they're all right, but it's not yeah. It's not what people expected. Like, no. look at the sort of games we're giving out, and it's just those three are the ones that fit that description of big Definitely. AAA titles. I wouldn't even mind if they weren't big AAA titles, if they were just sort of games that people have played. Like, if it was popular games rather than what was meant to be big. Because Brink was meant to be big, for example. Yeah. I keep mentioning that like, because Fable I'm Fable 3, upset about people it. look forward to because Fable 2 was, yeah, it was alright. Yeah. And Fable 3 sucked, and I was like, uh, why would you give away Fable 3 and not Fable 2? 
Mm. I mean, Fable 2, I think, was cheaper on the marketplace as well. Yeah, so it would make sense for them, it would make sense for us, but apparently no. So hopefully, fingers crossed, good games. Maybe. Hopefully. Slightly more expensive arcade games for free. Or just not arcade games. No <laughs> offence, but arcade games aren't known for being the subject of talk around gamers. They, yeah. are, they are more now than they were, but yeah. still, I would rather have Crisis than I would have... Uh, I can't think of an arcade game that's poop now. One of the ones that we got. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it? Many Shoot Robots. Might and Magic something something. <laughs> that was awful. I don't it remember was, that one. It really was. I played it for five minutes, hated it. That's oh. half, half of them I haven't even bothered like confirming the purchase so I can download it later. I'm like, no, I am not playing that. Oh, I've done it for all of them, apart from Fable 3 because I was on holiday at the time. Anyway, let's move on to new news. Other news. Tales from the Borderland, they had their panel at yeah, South by Southwest. Yeah, it was disappointing. There wasn't a lot announced. They announced two characters. One of them, in Fallout style, has more... Something very interesting for that panel. Bar- Skags. Yeah. They don't have buttholes. When you're going for skag poop, it's actually skag vomit. Because they don't have buttholes, they just vomit. How was that mentioned? I didn't watch it personally. <laughs> I think, like, um, they were talking about greed and... Like, um, one of the people who were, like, interviewing them, they did the yeah. podcast, The Girl, and she said, uh, surely if you're rummaging through skag poop, that's not really greedy, is it? And te- one of them just went into the mic and went, technically, it's skag vomit. And then the whole conversation about how skags don't have <laughs> buttholes. And... That's pretty cool. And um, the thing is, they fought up that sort of stuff, which I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the news from the actual thing that people want to hear, or the actual news, rather yeah. than skags don't have buttholes... <laughs> The female character you can you can play as either character, the male or female. The female has a better is Fiona. it Fiona? Is it called Charter? She's a con Barter. Artist. She's a con artist named Fiona. I have that. Yeah, and um basically she has better skills in talking, so she can convince people of things. She can lie her way around things. Whereas the dude has a cybernetic arm and can hack doors. A Hyperion worker named Reese. Yes. Who has a cybernetic arm and, and can hack doors. I didn't finish watching the panel, so I don't... Yeah. But they have different skill sets. Apparently their stories are going to pan out, and the way they said it was something like, you'll see two sides to the story, but not the real thing. Yeah, like they're lying. Yeah, so you... Because I think it's like they're telling the story. Yeah, it's from the, that's how they're going to do it. That's why it's a tale from the Borderlands, because yeah. it's them telling the story. And Borderlands, generally, they all start with, let me tell you... Marcus, one of the characters, saying, let me tell you a story. And that's how they start. Um, so yeah, that's how it's going to be done. I'm really looking forward to the idea that you're going to see two sides of a story that are the same story, but someone else's version of it. Yeah. And they really set my mind at ease about, you know how The Walking Dead is like really dark and Wolf Among Us is pretty dark and that's what people are kind of expecting. And they really set my mind at ease at um, how things are going to be done. Because like, Telltale used to do like Sam and Max, so they have done humour and like... In Borderlands, it's quite gallows humour. They all have really dark pasts that lead to the characters. Borderlands, so, you say now? Yeah, in Borderlands. Because they, they, that... they do, but you that, there's not much character, full stop. You play as characters, but you don't... I'm talking about the other characters. Like, Tiny yeah. Tina, she has a pretty tragic backstory. Yeah, no, the, all the other characters do, but I mean, the characters you play as don't. Yeah. None of them have very likeable or relatable personalities are anything I don't think I think they're lacking a personality in the sort of sense that you know you project your own one on it a little bit and that's what they want but yeah but then again Telltale tell, tell, don't do that I know they, but they make you fit the personality yeah but you're not going to so be playing far. as the sort of you're not going to be playing as a vault hunter or anything no like that. that's that's what you, they've okay. changed it so you're sort of like one of the NPCs in this if you see what I mean you're watching the story unfold rather than this is you you go do this in the world. Yeah. And they said it's going to be after Borderlands 2, after all the DLC and everything. Hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, oh no, I did know... I heard that from the panel, but I, uh, if you watch the other ones, I said about it being in between 1 and 2. Yeah. So I was wrong is what I'm saying. I was wrong. Next news! This is not really gaming, but I wanted to talk about it because we'll talk about the it. absurdity of it. We'll talk about it. Oh, God. Have you heard about Bro App? Bro, I've heard it mentioned. It lets you send automated oh, yes. messages to yes, your girlfriend it. so you can spend more time with your bros, the website says, so you can spend more time with your bros. This is not an advert. 
However, have you read the messages it send? They all look like they're written by 13-year-olds. Oh, yeah, because... Um, Can't wait to see you later. Daryl, isn't it, from The Walking yes. Dead? On, on, G- on the late night with Jim- Jimmy Fallon was reading like four of them out. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is an important point. It was created by two 29-year-old Australian males. Two nine-year-old? 29-year-old. Right, why is that relevant? Eh, Australians, 29-year-olds, especially 29-year-olds. Right. Mm, that's mm. an important point to note. What a fucking waste of money. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Automated messages. It would be really good if you could write your own ones. Or you could, like, change them so you could write them out fully. Opposed I'm to... not sure if you can. I, I mean, I don't have the app. I don't Neither use do it. I. I don't have a girlfriend. Why would I use it? <laughs> Just send, send automated messages to your mom every so often. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> Still not dead, bomb. Anyway. <laughs> there was a new Alien Isolation info trailer called Creating the Alien, which I thought was quite interesting. They explain the AI, how the AI is being programmed for the alien. The alien doesn't follow a set path, but no. it reacts to you. Yes, like your scent. It will, if you stay in one place for too long, it will pick up on your scent trail, for example. And also, like your sound, the sound you make and stuff like that. Yeah, which is really cool. It's a really, if they pull it off, it's going to be really impressive. Yeah, it might be one of. I mean, there have been good alien games, but this might be the first one in a while that's good. No, I wouldn't say there've been very good alien games. Full stop. Uh, the one on the PS1 wasn't that bad. Oh, I don't think I've only gone back as far as PS2. That was a shooter. It was basically like shoot the aliens. It was called Alien Trilogy, I think. Also, I think there was like a text-based adventure game. I'm not sure on one of the of Alien. Yeah, I know. I know there was with like um. Oh, what was it called? Uh, the film. The film? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, there was. That is it... one of my favorite games. There's a text-based ever. version of that. I'm not sure if there was one for Alien. But anyway, the AI looks really impressive in how they're doing it. It's very ambitious. Yeah. And, and I am and very cool. looking forward to it. It is very much a nerd thing of... Most people are going to be like, I don't care. I'm just going to play the game. And then we're like, oh, but look. It sniffs you out. It smells your ball sweat. So I have two bits of Titanfall news here, which may be linked. Ooh. Maybe. But like, there's no confirmation. You're about the delay. Uh, there's the delay. For the Xbox 360 version. It's been delayed again. Pushed back to April 8th for the USA and April 11th for Europe. So it's been pushed back again. Yep. What are EA doing? Uh, that's what I'm getting going to get on to. Titanfall doubles the sale of Xbox Ones in the UK. X- Titanfall is now an actual system seller, which I didn't think it would be because it's coming out on the 360. But it's a system seller. And I think... It's, maybe a, lot big, it's EA, a lot bigger than people anticipated. Maybe EA got a little bit of like a nudge to push it back from Microsoft. Like, we want to sell this console a little bit more, maybe. I wouldn't mind. A bit. I honestly wouldn't care about this happening if they were like, well, yeah, Microsoft are selling more Xboxes if we hold it back. So we're holding it back for two weeks. If you want it on 360, that's fine. We're still making it. Just wait an extra two weeks. No, because that would get people pissed off and no one would buy it. No, I said it wouldn't piss me off. No, because you're, you already have it on the Xbox One. I'm also on the verge of buying a PlayStation 4. Uh, I almost pressed the buy now button this morning. Really? Yeah, I was watching the Infamous Second Son. I, I saw watch- a trailer for it and I was like, I need this. I was watching gameplay this morning. I was watching part one of a YouTuber that's playing it and I'm like, oh. It looks good, doesn't it? This is. I think that's going to be a system seller for the PS4. Definitely. Oh, it definitely is. Cause I'm going to buy it because of that. Yeah. Just like the PS3 I would have for The Last of Us if I had got money. Yes, I don't have money. I think once I get money, my first port of call is going to be the PS3 for The Last of Us and a few other games. Infamous. Yeah, maybe one and two. Us. Apparently, the story is really good. Yeah, I've heard that is. Can you stop that? You're not only making noise, but you're going to hurt yourself. I'm playing with scissors, everybody. Nail scissors. Oh, is that what they are? I wonder why they were bent. Anyway, I'm not cutting my nails either. <laughs> so yes next news yeah that could be they could have pushed it back because of that and that would be really sucky but it I'll, doesn't affect us so but who cares I'm, I'm getting it for the 360 as well oh yeah yes so then I can play it downstairs and upstairs so when I'm like too tired to be sitting downstairs playing it I can go upstairs and play it in bed oh right. it won't carry over they said it won't carry over which is fine know, but separate set of achievements you know uh, will it though yeah because all the Xbox One and Xbox 360 games do I haven't actually looked into that because I'm not that bothered because you're too far ahead now, I'm like, I don't care. I give up. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, when I looked, we're already 2,000 apart-ish. 
you're 18,600 something, and I'm what, like 16,600. Yeah. But That's... you're cheating. How am I cheating? You're using games on your phone to boost your achievement. That's not That's cheating. It is cheating. It, I have to play the games like everyone else, and they're not easier. You, you're cheating. That's cheating. That is not cheating. I don't get achievements for playing games on my phone. Maybe you should get a Windows phone then if you want to. However, I did get Laura to play the um, training for Titanfall. I was like, I'm not going to play the training. Laura, play the training. I gave her the controller for half an hour. I said, play the training. Get me the achievement. That was the first thing I did. As soon as it was downloaded, okay, I'm going to get through this. Just play the training. It's no, unbearably long. It is. Especially when you know what you need to do already. Exactly. I didn't think, I don't think I learned anything. It's a good that. tutorial for if you haven't played it. But if you or have. if you haven't even seen it. If, really. Yeah. Or if you haven't played Call of Duty either, because controls are basically the same. <laughs> Although you've been using Bumper Jumper now, haven't you? I have been using Bumper Jumper. That's going I really well. I haven't even tried. That's going re- I was really surprised. It'd be better if you got one of those controllers that has the um, bar at the back of it. Oh, yeah. Um, if you had that, it'd be a lot easier. I'll tell you, it'd be a lot easier. Because I find myself using the corner of the bumper. Yeah. And that doesn't always click as well. So I'm having to like hold the bumper all the way around so I click it for definite. I imagine it must be easier for... You know how you used to hold a PS2 controller where you'd have two fingers on yes. each of the bumper buttons? I find myself like that over here now. Yeah, I'm... On my, in my left hand, I do have my finger on the bumper and the trigger at the same time now. Um, whereas on the other one, it's just the one. I find that so uncomfortable on you get the used to it. Xbox You get used to it. And you get used to it, man! I, I don't make change! Make sure you're a gamer! Bumper jump all the way! Nah, it, it's definitely weird, but it makes it a lot easier in this game because you do jump a hell of a lot. Yeah, I can I can see how it would be better, but I don't like change, as I said. Anyway, Ass Creed. Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Yep. Is, uh, Unity, is it? Um, Yes. Are Ass you not are you really impressed? I've got no notes, and I'm still reading <laughs> off half the stuff you are. Uh, Rumours slash leaked screenshots of um, Kotaku, it was. Of Assassin's Creed Unity, it's supposedly called... And the tagline is something like, um, one day till revolution, uh, let's take it back or something. I hope they have like Miz music in it. <laughs> in case you didn't hear Do that, that was Jake. Hear the people sing, sing. I'll stop now. The fact that you know that's awful. <laughs> it's a good movie. Uh, no. <laughs> Did you know the original wasn't a musical? Hmm? The original wasn't a musical. It was a book, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, I meant the original film. I don't know. I don't know if it was a book or not, but the original was the musical. Because my nan was like, hey, I watched that music every day. And I'm like, oh, cool. Did you like the songs? What songs? There weren't any songs. And we looked it up and there was no songs. Because she watched the old one. You should watch the new one. I've watched the new one. It's, I went to see one watch the new one. Oh. It's got what's his name in it. Wolverine. It's good. He doesn't stab anyone, though. No, because he's the good guy. And? Wolverine's a good guy. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it depends how you look at him. <laughs> yeah. He's an interesting character. If you close your left eye, and then turn your head to the left, close and, the then, one. and then squint your right eye, and then close it fully, <laughs> you can just see his good side. Right, next news. Oh, do you want to say something about Assassin's Creed? There isn't really much to talk about. Um, Not much as in Best guess, 18th century revolution. Probably. Because there have been lots of French revolutions. It's going to be 18th century-ish. They've Looking at like the carts and stuff, and different architecture. Because Assassin's Creed has always been good at, like, period architecture. <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably. It's, I would say it's going to be cool, but it's going to be the same as the others, essentially. I'm going to say this quick because it's also not games, but I wanted to mention it. Yep. Concept art for Avengers Age of Ultron. Hulkbuster. Yes, I saw that. that is, I know. The Hulkbuster doesn't look that impressive, though. It looks like it looks in the Lego games. Well, that's how it looks. Yeah, no, but, like, Lego have had to turn it down. Minor detail. Yeah. Like, it's shiny, hasn't got much detail, just shiny and occasional gold bits. Which is fair enough, that's all Iron Man suits are, but they could have put more detail on it. I'm looking forward to the Winter Soldier now. Well, that's... it is only concept art at this point. Yeah, but concept art is normally a lot de- more detailed than that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's only concept art, so it could change, that's what I'm saying. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm looking forward to the Winter Soldier. Looking forward to all the Marvel movies. And Guardians of the Galaxy, supposedly, is pulling all of the Marvel films together. Really? Apparently. I wouldn't have thought that that's the film to do that. I know if, if there is a film to do it, it's definitely that one. Um, but, as I said, that's a lot of films to try and all tie together. That's a lot of rope. Yeah. In a way, they are all are all kind of tied together, though. Yeah, they all um, not necessarily link, but they all have references or they all 
refer to each other in separate things. Except for Fantastic Four and Spider-Man, because they were owned by Sony. Yeah, they were different. But then The Amazing Spider-Man, mm. that's not Sony. Yeah, it is. But that one's going to tie in, apparently. I th- I did hear rumours about that. But that's why I but said it wasn't Sony, because... Disney and Sony might be coming together for something. Like so, that. hopefully, they say it's going to tie it all together, which will be awesome. It looks awesome. I've already got my favourite character sorted. Fair enough. Is it Rocket Raccoon? No. Ooh. That's everyone's like, no. I'm That's not my favourite favorite. character. That's always my favourite He's genuinely not my favourite. He's a raccoon. And I'm a rocket. I am Groot. I am Groot. And Groot is a tree. I know. He's a tree that's the muscle of a raccoon. Oh, what was the joke in the advert? He's been hanging around with Rocket Raccoon as his backup slash um, garden plant. Nice. So, Marvel movies, looking forward to it. Do you want to see The Winter Soldier when it comes out? Of course I do. It's like a couple of weeks' time. Is it? Yeah. I didn't know it was so close. Yeah, we should go. The premiere was last night. Um, yes. Anyway, new news. More news. Interesting news. Mm. Not that interesting. I was like, is it interesting? Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Uh, Not only is it short, it is mega short. Ten if you, minutes! If you know what you're doing, and you rush through it, and you skip all cutscenes... I mean, it was obviously going to cut, going to cut it down massively if you skipped cutscenes because it's a Metal Gear Solid game. But, but you can finish it in ten minutes. And how much is it? How much is the price tag to go for with it, Jake? Thirty pound. So that's like forty dollars ish. Uh, but in America, it's thirty dollars. Oh, so it's the same. So yeah, we're getting ripped off over here. Yep. It should be twenty pounds. But even twenty pounds for ten minutes is. Mm. Actually, I think it might be thirty dollars for a physical copy, but twenty dollars for a download. So we're getting ripped off even more. But still, mm. Mm. it should be like that. Should be the intro. That should be the training for the game. Maybe that not training, be but maybe ten pound fifteen. No, a fiver. Ten minutes, a fiver. <laughs> no, because it's longer if you don't know what you're doing. If you're actually... wait, no, the Binding of Isaac was five quid, and I've spent easily ten hours in that game. I know, but apparent like that's skipping all the side quests as well. There's. I mean, not, I don't know what the side quests are like. I've heard that it's good because I saw the... I've heard, I've only heard good things about it other than its length. I've seen in the video, like, he's not doing the stealth stuff. He's just sort of like running past and shooting people who yeah. see him. But if I mean, that's a valid technique. But if you do that, you'll finish it in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely short. Uh, I'm not sure it's worth the price tag, basically. No. That's my point. I've got to the point where, you know how games are so big? Like with their gigabytes and stuff. Oh, I thought you meant the cases. The cases are getting massive. Oh, the cases are getting smaller. <laughs> no, but I've been looking at like the price tag for the per install. gigabyte. Like thirty pound for four point five gigabytes. Is that really worth it? Then you are weird. Because some... I know because it doesn't say anything about length of the game. No, it's it doesn't. Like, it doesn't how say my brain anything. is working. It doesn't say anything about the game at all. Because <laughs> some games have massive downloads, others have tiny downloads. Like it's... Titanfall, I think was like a three. 3.5, wasn't it? No, it was um, 13.5-ish. It was in the teens. Oh, okay. Then it was either Call of Duty or Dead Rising that was a very small one then. Uh, I don't know. But, like, that's it wouldn't be Dead Rising. Dead Rising with a 13 gigabyte <laughs> patch. <laughs> yeah, I know. But well, that's what I'm saying. Is they vary so much that it's yeah. silly. Like, um, silly. Rayman Legends came out on next-gen consoles, and that's like 6 gigabytes. But I think that's just sort of like a port. That's why that one's so small. I don't know if anyone's... Bought it. You have? No, I haven't. I have Rayman Origins on the 360. Oh, okay. I knew I saw it sitting I'm going to get um, Legends, but on the 360 because it's cheaper. It's like £10 cheaper. Last news. Microsoft have finally announced lots of indie games for the Xbox One, which I am. Have they actually announced them? Yep. I did not realise they had announced them. I knew 25 they had, of them. I knew they had announced that there was a lot more coming soon. Yeah. And they, these are. I thought they announced the developers. I didn't realize they announced the actual. These are the titles. only ones that Microsoft are like at liberty to announce because right. they're idea Xbox yeah. and all that. So there could be more, but just a few no, of them. There's definitely more. Oh, one quick thing: Epic Games have announced they're working on something. Have they? Yes. They well, they, uh, they haven't. No, that's what they said. Is it a game or an engine? No, a game. They're working on Unreal Engine Four at the moment. Is it four or five they're working on now? I don't know. Did they finish four? I think they finished four. Only just. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they're working on Unreal Engine, and they're also working on a game of some description. Awesome. Looking forward to that. That's all they've announced. <laughs> anyway, carry on. A lot of these games seem like um, ports, or just... Some of them are updated versions of oh, other great. games that run out on platforms. But still, I'm excited about a lot of them. Like, like what? 
Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. What the fuck's that? It's like um a sort of Metroidvania action thing. Thing. It looks good. That sounds like a really... I've heard good things. <laughs> Great. Congratulations. Guacamelee. Guacamelee. Contrast, which is out on the PS4 and the yes. PS3 and Xbox 360. Which already, I've only so. heard good things about as well. I've heard good, good things. so I, mean, I might get that on the Xbox One. I don't have I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Uh, Dive Kick Edition Edition was announced. Sorry, pardon? Dive Kick Addition Edition. I got it wrong last time. Dive Kick! Yes. <laughs> so it's the Addition Edition, not the Edition Edition. Yeah, which... Anyway, it still sounds weird, regardless of which one you say. <laughs> and, um... 1001 spikes which sounds like an interesting concept but I haven't seen any footage or anything you have 1001 lives which sounds like a lot but it's one of those really hard platformers oh it's one of those fuck you platformers yep so interesting a fuck you platformer why would I want another one of them in my life I've still got especially one with a live system I've still got I'm not um, entirely sure Cloudberry Kingdom I've still got that that's a, a fuck you that's a good game though that's a fuck you it's not so much fuck you as it is like you fucked yourself no, it's a fuck you. Have you seen the some of the levels? It's yes, a fuck, I've been playing it. It's a fuck I've you. I've been very slowly progressing. If you don't know what we're talking about, YouTube Cloudberry Kingdom, and you will see. It starts off nice and simple, then it gets to fuck you. Very quickly as well, it's good. <laughs> it's addictive, and I have no idea why. Super Time Force. That's not one I'm looking forward to. Wasn't that the arcade game in terms of actual in an arcade? No idea. Anyway. I know there's Time Crisis, but I thought it was a Super Time Force as well. It certainly looks like um, you're sort of ar- an arcade game. It's like based around loads of arcade games. Oh, Basically, okay. it's one of... It's like a Contra type shooter. I don't know what right. they're called. It's like side-scrolling shooter. Yeah. And you can switch between, I think, eight characters, and you can travel back in time. And say, so, like, if you get killed, you can tra- like travel back in time. There's no lives. Or actually, there are lives. I think there's like 30 lives. Anyway, but you can then kill the person before they kill your old life and save your life. And then go back to the life that you had before you went back in time. Yeah, and like you can go get a collectible, reverse time, and then your old you will go get that collectible while you continue the level. So, And you have like 60 seconds to complete a level. That seems really, 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 really cool. It does. And especially being the level seems to be short. I also have a few oh, other things that I've written down here. But I can't remember what they are, so I can't really talk about them. But Read them out. <laughs> Strike Suit Zero and The Last Tinker. I'm trying to think of what they are, but I can't remember. They sound weird. They sound like pornos you've designed. They do, don't they? Hmm. The Last Tinker. No, Mary, please don't go. Huh? I don't know. Someone's leaving. Okay. Yes. Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. I haven't seen that. Neither have I. I think that's all I've got. Have you got anything? I want to mention the achievement in um, Titanfall. Oh yeah, the, the, this is the fuck you fuck you achievement. This I is have. the fuck you thing I've seen in gaming so far. I mean... It's an achievement. There have been like the really achievements in Gears of War which are pretty fuck you but they're achievable and you get a hundred games score and you're like, yeah, I have achieved something. Yes, they, they are... Those ones are my like least favourite achievements in games so far. I don't know how this one's going to play up. But they've been like my hardest ones, but I've enjoyed getting them because you have to work with your friends to get them, and they really are. Uh, this is difficult. Yeah. Um, whereas in Titanfall, there's an achievement for tenth prestige, basically. Yeah. Like their generations, they're called, but it's prestige in level fifty. Zero gamer score. Zero gamer score. Is you you can get a thousand gamer score, score in that game without getting that achievement, and you'll have ninety nine percent of the achievements. That is a fuck you for people with OCD. Yeah. Then again. I feel like I'm going to be playing this for a long time, so I'm probably going to get it eventually. I don't feel like I'm going to be playing it that long. Somebody already got it. I know they have. They got it in like three days. Well, they got to Gen 10. I'm not sure if they did it on PC or Xbox, but yeah. I think it was PC. Yeah. But yes, anyway, someone has done it, uh, which is pretty impressive. At first, when you start the game, you feel like you're leveling up really quickly. And then I was watching myself leveling today, and I used like a double XP card on one of my best games, and it was still like... Not even a quarter of the like bar. A half a millimetre. No, not even that. It was bigger than that, but it wasn't even a quarter of the um, bar. And I'm at level 48, so I'm almost at my first gen. Yeah, but that's just how they work. But then they're going to be leveling up quicker as you go along, so hopefully it will get easier. I think that's everything. Yep. McDonald's in the UK have started doing the Monopoly thing. I want a fruit bag. And he's won a fruit bag. A fruit bag. He doesn't normally eat fruit, apart from the masses of pineapple juices in his room. 
but I'm not going to mention why he's drinking the pineapple juices. It's but it's not because I want my sperm to taste different. Why should I care what it tastes like? Why do you have to bring that up? They didn't have the tropical juice when my mum went shopping that I usually have, right? So she thought pineapple juice instead. Okay. Why are you drinking tropical juice anyway? That's like pineapple juice. Doesn't have pineapples in it. It's carrots in it. I don't know why. It's Carrot. Like, it has carrots in it. Loads of tropical fruits and then carrot. That is weird. Tastes good. That is weird. Yep. So we're going to go get McDonald's and some Monopoly things. Yeah, maybe we'll win. Maybe we'll see you down there. Maybe we'll win an Xbox One. We probably won't see we you down do there. We'll do a giveaway. But we, I'm not doing that. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Thank you for listening. I will be giving away copies of Titanfall. Will you? Yes. Where are you going to get them? I, I've already got them. Have you? Yeah. You're going to give them away? Yeah. And I haven't worked out how, so uh, follow us on Twitter at Gaming Autopsy. And we'll announce something maybe. On there or on the Facebooks. We have a not Facebook the, thing. We don't have a Facebooks. So not we need Facebooks. to make a Facebooks. We should make a Facebooks. Or on our Tumblr. Tumblr's probably the best place because we are on there as well. Gaming Autopsy on Tumblr. Gamingautopsy.tumblr.com Hashtag fannies. No, that's, that's not something that's on there. I've hashtagged with it. I've yeah, hashtagged fannies. I don't really use Twitter. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Good luck, people.